Teaching the Civil War Podcast, Episode 30, an interview with Mr. Norman Ball. Welcome to another edition of the Teaching the Civil War podcast. I'm Jim Bigley, and on today's show, I'm going to share with you an interview that I did with uh, Mr. Norman Ball, who is an author and playwright and has written a musical that he calls The Sides Musical. And that musical is about, talks the story about uh, the character and has a tie to the character, the Red Badge of Courage. So it's a rather lengthy interview, so I thought I would share it with you today. And what I wanted to do is just jump right into it. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Norman Ball. So I'm here with um, Norman Ball, who is an author, a writer, a musician, and a businessman. Uh, he's from Washington, D.C. area. And he is uh, the author of several books and publications. But most recently, he wrote uh, a play called The Sides Musical. And it is loosely based on the Red Badge of Courage. And we're going to take a few minutes and talk about that. So, Norman, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jim. So tell me a little bit about uh, how you got interested in the American Civil War. Well, I've always been a, you know, a student like so many people. I'm always intrigued. You go into the bookstores and you know, the Civil War commands about three aisles in, in a typical bookstore. I, I just have a, I'm an avid amateur and I love to read about it. And uh, I'm also sort of a literary guy. I write a lot of essays and poems. And, and, and so I, I'm, a, I'm a big Stephen Crane fan as well. And I was, it's funny, about two years ago, I was out, uh, we were just casually having a couple of drinks with a, a writer friend of mine, and he happened to mention that um, the sesquicentennial was almost upon us. And I, and I said, well, what, what's the sesquicentennial? Well, that's 150 years, as I'm sure you know. Um, and uh, simultaneously, I was writing some Civil War music with a Canadian uh, colleague of mine, and he kind of toured the South on a, in, like a, in a folk guitar kind of context with some of our music. And I got to thinking, well, you know, I'd like to marry uh, the Red Badge of Courage to some sort of musical format. I think it really lends itself to that, and, and, and that's sort of how I got started. Uh, that, that's interesting. And again, we have the what, you, what you're calling the sides, uh, a Civil War musical. Does sides stand for something? or? Well, technically, it's called. I call it sides, a civil civil war musical inspired by the Red Badge of Courage. It, it, it what it is, Jim. It it, it sort of uh, takes great poetic license. I I jump um, up to 1915, which is uh, uh, 50 years after the conclusion of the Civil War. We're, we're on the eve of uh, World War One. The Lusitania was just sunk by the Germans, and and at this point, Henry Fleming, the protagonist of the Red Badge of Courage, he's now a 70 year old. Civil War veteran, and he encounters this young gentleman, about 15 years old, by the name of Gabe Sander, who is all spit and vinegar and wants to go fight Kaiser Wil Wilhelm. Uh, and, and so the play really uh, springboards off the Red Badge of Courage, jumps into the future, and, and, and it, it, it's essentially the process of Henry Fleming gently counseling Gabe against the, uh, you know, the horrors of war and the reality of war. Uh, and, and throughout the play, a series of historical figures from the Civil War kind of appear as ghostly apparitions, and they sing songs, and they, uh, there are quotes from the Red Badge of Courage and, and, and quotes from, from a variety of, of, of historical people. And that's sort, of the, that's sort of how the play works. So it's inspired. It doesn't really follow the Red Badge of Courage. So does, he, does, um, does Gabe go off to war, or does he just want to go fight them? or? Well, that's kind of left, uh, you know, sort of like a, a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. But there are clues at the end of the play as to where Gabe may be leaning. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you know, uh, Henry Fleming does his best. But uh, you know, uh, it, you know, the, the sense of adventure that Henry himself felt as a, as a young man is very much pulsing in, in Gabe. And um, so it's sort of an interesting. Uh, uh, it, it's sort of left suspended at the end as to as to what Gabe ultimately does. Now, the Red Badge of Courage is one of the more 
popular Civil War novels. It's one of the most popular novels probably going out there. I mean, how did you pick that particular that particular book? Well, I was really intrigued uh, by the Red Badge of Courage, uh, Jim, for a variety of reasons. I think it's it's a fascinating novel, as you say. I think um, uh, in About dot com, one of those internet sites, I think it's it's ranked the fourth most popular novel in the United States. I'm not sure if that's on the basis of sales or how, but it, it's a perennial classic. It was written uh, in 1871, I believe, uh, and, and after the Civil War. Stephen Crane was only 20 when he wrote it. It's an, he was just a, a genius, a literary genius. And uh, the funny thing was that as, as Civil War veterans would read The Red Badge of Courage, they would correspond with Stephen Crane, and, and it, they would insist that he was a fellow veteran. They were so convinced of the veracity of, of the novel. And in fact, he wasn't even born. I, I'm sorry, it, that's right. He was born in 1871, Stephen Crane. So he was born after the Civil War. He wrote it, I think, in 1895. So... Uh, it, it, it's it's sort of fascinating how, uh, how 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 the realism that he's credited with, you know, bringing realism to to war. It was it, we're, we're sort of used to that now with all the movies, all the blood and guts of war and how war is really hell. But there was still kind of this noble uh, sense of war because we hadn't really been exposed to it. Uh, Matthew Brady, the photographer, was was a source for for Stephen Crane. We've all seen those very graphic uh, Brady photographs of, of casualties in, in the Civil War, and that, that helped to, to, to kind of take away the veneer of nobility that war, war had had up until that time. So, like, if I recall correctly, the, the Red Badge of Courage ends with, um, with, the, with the character, he's leading the charge, right? With the bat, he picks up the battle flag and, and leads them against the Confederates. So, so it's kind of like he's leading off that way, and then he comes and meets your uh, your protagonist, if you will, uh, Gabe, in your, you know, so how did, and they were, I guess they were about the same year, age, correct? When, I mean, Henry, Henry was I would, pretty young. Yeah, I, I, I would say uh, Henry Fleming in Red Badge Curse, he's probably 19 or 20. He's, he's a very young man. He's not married yet. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a New Yorker. He's an, on the Union side. Uh, it's really a fictitious um People think that, uh, that most of the battle scenes in the novel are, are based on Chancellorsville, uh, but they're not. People aren't entirely sure. Uh, Stephen Crane was not a. He re- really wasn't a stickler for, the, you know, the historicity of the novel. He was more kind of impressionistically trying to paint uh, the reality of war as best he could as, as a non-combatant. Uh, um, but he does a. It's just a remarkable job, and and then he goes on to become a war correspondent. He dies at a very early age. Uh, he died in ni- 1900, uh, so he he was uh, what 20, 28, 29 when he died. Very young man. Wow, um, and yeah, that's interesting. So then, you, you know, what what kind of things does your does young Gabe you know learn from Henry throughout the story? <laughs> Well, you know, Henry's not really hitting him over the head in a in a very overt way as as to the evils of war. He's sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gabe, like a lot of young guys, particularly in the pre-Hollywood, you know, they 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 lived on comics and and stories and storybooks. And uh, Gabe has a very uh, idealistic view of 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 war, as a lot of young guys do. And uh, they're, they they live on adjacent farms. And Gabe sort of bumps into the old soldier, uh, as he's called in the play, um, just kind of walking around his creek with his younger brother. And um, so I, I tried not to make it. I don't want it to be a overtly in any war type situation, but it's it's kind of a um, uh, it, it's a, it's it's sort of standing on the shoulders of giants. I look at it as like a generational thing, where the, the you know the the older generation is is doing its best to. To counsel the younger generation against, uh, you know, committing the same errors, but of course we've been having wars for thousands of years. So, you know, how successful is it? Well, you know, it, it, it remains to be seen. Now you talk about, I mean, the the title of the musical is Sides. Uh, you know, so you're talking about people taking different sides in a political point of view, or is it? Uh, it is sort personal? of. I call it a meditation on sides. It it, it is the the idea, and I and that's why I think it's very prevalent at, and very relevant at this point in time. I have in my in in the book that's coming out uh, in the preface uh, a very to me a very astonishing quote from former President Jimmy Carter. It goes back I think uh, October two thousand ten in that time frame, and he and 
you know, presidents are not in the habit of being drama queens. I mean, they're very, you know, sedate kind of people. But he, he, it was an astonishing quote. He said that the, the, the acrimony that we face in the United States today exceeds the red and blue division we have today, which is obviously a political division and thankfully not yet a civil, civil strife division. But it exceeds what Abraham Lincoln faced on the eve of the Civil War. And I thought that was just an amazing quote from a former president. Uh, and, and part of what Sides attempts to say is if we, allow, if we indulge our differences and we don't come together and, 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 and form compromise in a democracy, what we will become, we, we will reach a point where our, all we will see are our divisions and the acrimony will be so extreme that we could very well lurch into another civil war. Hey, that's that's neat. So, how do you um you you, had, well, you and I had talked about you know using this in in schools or high schools or colleges. You know, how do you see this your play being used by by schools to teach you know people about these internal struggles and the Civil War and you know World War One and things like that. Well, we have a uh, it's it's a musical, Jim, and it's got twenty songs and from a variety of different genres. We have you know Negro Negro spirituals. We have uh, more Broadway show type tunes. We've got singer songwriter acoustic and some rock and roll type songs. Tried to mix it up to create a range of music. We have a karaoke CD, hopefully to karaoke and singing is 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 quite, you know, as you know, the rage right now among a lot of, uh, a lot of young people. So that's, that's an attempt to sort of excite young people and get them involved. The other fascinating thing to me about the Red Badge of Courage, Jim, is that it, it's kind of this intersection of you have history, literature, and what we're doing here theatrically and musically, uh, uh, historically, and as I say, in, in a current events, red-blue versus blue-gray sort of thing. So you have this pretty remarkable convergence of a lot of different scholastic disciplines, which could very well interest a lot of different teachers and a lot of different professors. And, and, and so it's kind of that multidisciplinary thing that really sort of got me very inspired about the, the, the novel again. Now, you, you talked about some uh, historical characters. So who, who shows up and how do they show up in the, in the, in the play? Well, most of the historical characters show up uh, and, and sort of uh, relate uh, – their context in the Civil War by by way of a song. Uh, Harriet Tubman has a song called Underground Railroad. Absolutely. Frederick Douglass shows up. Uh, he sort of talks about uh, some of the great, he, he, he left behind some great quotes, Frederick Douglass. One, one that comes to mind is, uh, slavery is a state of mind. And there are a lot of people who are enslaved, uh, not physically, but in their own minds. And, and in fact, Frederick Douglass famously said that he ceased to become a slave when he confronted his his master, and although he was still a, a, a slave before he escaped, of course, he, he he was no longer a slave in his own mind, and that was the most important thing to him. So, and we have we have Jim, we have uh, John Brown, um, who who has a song and and some interesting quotes throughout. Uh, of course, Abraham Lincoln, R. E. Lee. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, John Wilkes Booth. Uh, so, so they sort of speak through songs, uh, and, and that's, we think, is sort of a more palatable way to, to sort of break down the historical message and maybe make it more uh, you know, receptive to young people. And you wrote all of the songs, or you wrote them in conjunction with some fellow musicians? I, I wrote the songs. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the lyricist and the playwright and the songwriter, and I, I have a lot of musical colleagues that, that helped uh, on the arrangements and, and things, but I, essentially it's, it's sort of my written thing for the most part, you know, front to back.